I'm Sarah. I am a business mentor for women in midlife, and I help women to make a lot more money without killing themselves. My background is as running a health practice for 25 years as a naturopath and homeopath, specializing in women and hormones. And I have a real um, radar for helping women to simplify their business. And uh, it's, as a ruler, it's I'm just really like I want to monetize everything, every little bit. And it's it's a continual lesson for me to simplify my own business and not want to make it really complicated. So as I as I help women to, to simplify theirs. And uh, um, so I am a ruler. Number one, uh, very close second is maverick and celebrity and romantic. My romantic hardly gets a look in because my ruler brain wants to take over everything. And um, but it's funny being away from home and having so much time and being on a different time zone from all, a lot of my clients. I've uh, my my romantic is having a lovely time. My romantic had a lovely week in quarantine as well of watching Netflix all day long, which I have never done in my life before. I've never wanted to waste one minute of my working time. <laughs> And it's really, it's really amazing to, uh, to see how my different archetypes have come out when I'm in a different situation. So that's me. Um, so the first question that I have for you, and Sandra, we're going to start with you on this one and go around, is when you took the SMA quiz, were you surprised by your results or did you think, yep, that's just me, that's just me? I was really surprised when I first did the the quiz. I expected Nurturer to be way up there. I thought I'd come out and and I had done work in the past with uh, different people on like maybe sole purpose or whatever and came out with a sort of a kind of an archetype and it was always Nurturer. At school, I got the Mother Hen Award for for help go, like maybe going on school camps with the year below and looking after everybody and I was um I was a middle child but I was all, I used to make everybody's lunches every morning including my parents to get everybody out the door but I just actually just wanted to get to school and do the work and <laughs> I wanted to sort of work on my career and I think that, and I was originally a nurse before I was a naturopath, so it was always that caring kind of thing and then coaching. And so I, my nurturer is way down the list. And like, I wasn't surprised with the ruler at all. I was really surprised with the celebrity because very often that was right up there. And I was just like, no, that's not me. I'm not into glamorous handbags or I'm not into anything. But my kids know how to really rile me. They'll give me that if they're setting the table, they'll give me a slightly smaller fork than everybody else. And they know I will not eat with it. Or they'll give me a plate that isn't the plate I want to eat off. And they'll just know they'll just sit there watching. And then they'll watch me when my husband looks away, swap forks or something. Cause I'm just like, I will not eat. I'm not a child. I'm not going to use a small fork. And I'm just very particular about so many things. So it's, um, but the ruler thing was, was really remarkable. And and it gave me, it was such a relief to know that I wasn't broken, <laughs> that I knew that, you know, that like being at the hairdresser or having a massage, I was just like, please don't waste time here. Like, please, I do not need to talk endlessly for hours and be here all day, please. Can we just make this really fast? And, <laughs> and I would always be trying to figure out like, do you know if you did this with your booking system, you would actually make a lot more money. And it, it, it was just such a relief. The Maverick was a little bit of a surprise as well, being right up there. But once I looked into it, I'm just like, no, that's totally me as well. Like I am really quite a rebel. And I think a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs are as well. We don't like working in jobs and don't like being told what to do. Well, I certainly, I certainly don't. Even as a nurse, I used to get told off all the time. I'd have big hoop earrings in in the 80s. And I'd be told, you cannot wear earrings. I would sit on the patient's bed and sit there and hold their hands or want to listen to their stories. And I'd be like, Sarah, you can't sit on patient's bed. And I was always being in trouble uh, for for doing things differently. And I, I always knew that I just had to get away from the, the mainline system. So, yeah, I was surprised with some things, but not with others. I want to go back in time a little bit. And Charlotte, we're going to start with you. 
where think about you as a little ruler did it come out was it suppressed were you called bossy as a kid where did that come up um and you know did people say things to you about your rulerness as a kid as a child I was always wanting to organize people and herd people and uh be head of anything I could kind of sort of <laughs> rule. I was a leader of the cheer squad in high school. I was, uh, um, I led the softball team. Um, I was leader in all sorts of things, but I was always being called bossy. I was called little Miss Bossy Boots. I was told not to, you know, not to speak speak up I, I I think I slowly over over the years started shrinking so by the time I got to certain stages like I really wanted to be a prefect I would have loved to have been head girl but I didn't hold my hand up I sat at the back of the room hoping that it would just kind of happen without me having to do anything because I didn't want a light shot on me and to be accused of wanting too much or or uh you know want being bossy really that that was just such a trigger to me over over time um and I think that's why I went for something like nursing so I could just be one of the crowd and not sort of stand out and but I knew I knew very early on that it was it was not going to be my future um but yeah it was it was continually wanting to to fix it in that in our home I was always wanting to sort of organize things in different ways and get uh get things get things working in a better way and even amongst my friends was always organizing the organizing the school ball organizing when I was a student nurse I organized our, our graduation ball I was always sort of trying to do things uh really effectively and efficiently uh but I was always trying not to not to come across as being bossy um and not to uh and you know not to shine too bright to to, to keep small and quiet in the corner um because I was like basically shamed for it whenever I tried to sort of rise rise above too much and uh it's uh yeah it was hard it was absolutely really hard at times um when you guys were kids did you like the movies about business because I remember um like the 80s movie big business with Bette Midler or nine to five or um she devil you know movies where women would start a business or they would move to the big city and it was always so energizing for me because I lived in a small town you know and I, I really resonated with that um, whereas probably a lot of my friends were watching you know dreaming about getting married and watching those movies I was like oh my god I want to be you know don't tell mom the babysitter's dead where Christina Applegate you know put on a suit and pretend you know blagged her way into a corporate job at the age of 16 I was just like oh that's me so I didn't ask the other archetypes this question but I think it's really key for you guys we talked about you as a little baby boss tell me about your corporate life or your jobs because um, I think we can blag our way I think we're really good at interviews um, but where does that break down in a corporate setting or working for someone else where, you know, were you told, you know, you're too big for your boots here? I was told oh, you just don't like following rules. And, you know, I found, I found all the, you know, stuff around, let's all sign this card for Janet's birthday. I was like, oh, it can be fucked. Um, and so there was just felt like a lot of busy work and I just did not succeed in, in corporate life at all. It did not, it did not suit me. In my working life pre-business, I suppose as a, as, as a child, I'd watched my parents have their own businesses. So I'd always been in, within, with, with, within their business and, and seeing that firsthand. They were, my parents were both hairdressers. They both trained in London and they both, and they had big, huge hairdressing salons in the 60s with 
chand- I always remember the chandeliers. That's why my celebrity loving loving the chandeliers that have thirty staff that have. Uh, I used to love the apprentices that uh, that have like boyfriend magazines and Cleos and Cosmos and stuff. And I used to, but I used to love watching them take money. And I was fascinated by that. I was fascinated by you know tipping and uh, and then for four years uh, when we lived in Adelaide actually they had a, a coffee shop a little restaurant and they uh, and I was fascinated sometimes would be collecting collecting uh, the you know cups and sauce and stuff and sometimes they'd be like 50 cents under a sauce or something and I was just like oh my god money is so magical it can just appear anywhere and I realized when I started working my uh, get I lied about my age when I was because I thought in my school holidays I could either you know work for nothing wanting the occasionally to find some money or I could get a job so when I was you at the time you had to be 14 to work so I was only 13 so I lied about my age uh, so that I could get a job and get paid because I just loved getting paid and then and I worked all the way through my teenage years and then when I was 17 I became a student nurse and the main reason I chose nursing was because we got paid as a student and we had to move out into the nursing quarters and I used to love every Friday would go to the pay office like I started my nursing training in 1983 so it was a long time ago but we used to get $143.46 in a brown envelope in cash and I used to love going and putting I used to put the money on my bed because it was a lot more money than I had earned in a part-time job or anything and I just I just loved being paid and I loved being paid in cash as well it was amazing and uh the um the as I moved on I spent probably about 13 years working in hospitals and when I was when I finished my nursing training I moved to Sydney and I was working I didn't want to go and do the low levels of work I didn't want to go to a general ward and do general nursing or anything general I wanted to go straight to intensive care I thought no I'm (laughs) I want to do something that I considered to be more it's sort of at a higher level and I said we can't do that but we can send you to a uh, high dependency surgical ward and I'm like yep that'll do within three months most of the staff had left and I was at the age of 23rd on the roster which meant every single time I went turned up to work I was in charge and I loved that now I got kind of burnt out but I still loved walking around with the clipboard with the doctors and all the medical teams and arranging everything and it really triggered the other nurses on the ward because there would be nurses that would arrive. A lot of them were from England and Ireland uh, because they just went through so many staff and they'd have to get people from other places. And they would be maybe five or 10 years older than me, a lot more experienced. I was I was still 20 and uh, uh, and they, they had like so much experience and they would be, I'd hear them talking behind my back. I'd hear sometimes they'd say it to my face that we're more experienced. Why are you in charge? You shouldn't be in charge. And I was like, and I was, I knew I was doing a good job as well. I felt like, like I was made for this, but it was really hard. It was like being back in the schoolyard. It was like being told again, you're too big for your boots. You're too bossy. Who do you think you are to be doing this? And yeah, again, it was really hard. And I just knew, I just knew I, I needed to run. And, and I was just thinking, always thinking about like oh this is why my parents had their own business this is why because you can be in control of your of your situation and I was I had a radar out for what else can I do what else can I do where I don't have to have you know I don't have to be in this situation that I actually am the boss by by right and not there's nobody to call me bossy because I am the boss (laughs) and I am not kind of um not trying to kind of wing it or convince anybody else that I have a right to be in this position. So it was really, really fascinating. And it was interesting when I went off, I went off and then studied for four years as to become a naturopath and, and, and it was working in other people's practices, then other people's clinics, it was basically the same thing would kind of happen until I created my own practice. But very early on, even as a graduate naturopath I was invited back to the back to the college to 
to be a lecturer and to run this, organize the the student clinic and again I stepped into that role of 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 being a leader and I loved it I I loved I, I loved all of that so it was amazing to see the same things would kind of play out no matter what what situation I was in and I just always felt like once I had my own business I was like oh, yes yes this is this is this is what I want this is what I need and now that my business has grown so much and I have a team, it's it's really interesting to see, see the archetypes play out within that as well. And but it's uh being a, a ruler and a Virgo is just I just want to organize everybody and I want to, but I don't want the fuss. I don't want any fuss. It used to drive me mad in hospitals, yeah, oh, somebody's birthday or something, and they're all putting in money for flowers or or any of that. And I'm just like, and even when when patients would leave like that have maybe been in intensive care for a long time or something and leave and then that bias chocolates and bias flowers or something like that. I'm just like we don't want like I just never really valued any of that sort of fussiness I'm just like can, all I want like can you just say a heartfelt thank you and move on can we just move, let's on, move on let's just get on can with we it, just Kelly? move swiftly along yeah 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 exactly thanks Sarah um, so I want to talk, um, I want to hear about sabotages and I've just got this question here for you. And I think we're starting with Jess for this one is how is your ruler stuff showing up and sabotaging in your business? Cause we know that this is a good thing. We know it's great, but if you're not aware of it, or if you let some of those things sabotage, or I think the question is, are we actually fine? And it's our other archetypes. That are sabotaging us? That's the question. Because um yeah, you know, and a couple of examples, if you don't have it, and I'm sure you'll get them anyway, of like, you know, do you outgrow things too quickly? Are you committing to things too much? Are you trying to work with the wrong clients and railroading them? Um, you know, are you um not pricing enough? Is it, you know, do you, is your business was you can do this before SMA if you want. Did you realize your business model didn't work for your personality? So um, I would love to hear, like, how is this ruler stuff showing up or is it your other archetypes that are actually ruining it all in the perfect business? As far as team goes, definitely used to, pre-SMA, definitely I used to sabotage myself with hiring people that were very like me. And uh, I learned really that I didn't need to clone myself. I needed complete opposite. So I, I hire team members that have very high nurturers and connectors so that they can just go do that part. However, I'm very aware that if there's too much of that going on, then clients just become codependent on their coach. And I, I need to come in and I'm known, I suppose it's a real ruler thing. I am called the queen of the loving shelf because I'll just swoop in and go like, no, stop, stop telling someone they're doing a great job when this needs to change, uh, because you're just repeating the same pattern. So it's, it's, I can, it's, it's having that balance between the archetypes, I think, in business is, is, has been really, really important for me. Um, the, the thing around business models was even though it's what I do with my clients when I did SMA for the first time and I was in the first round of it, it was, it blew my mind because I realized how long I did one-on-one -on -one for like for pretty much 30 years in my business. And I had been in that, even though I had gone to group programs, realized that like, I just had to stop all the one-on-one. -on -one. And I started teaching women to go straight to one-to-many and uh, and because and and this is when you're ready for it and particularly rulers rulers are really ready for that so much faster i think than than many other archetypes so the the business model part really really blew my mind the um the constantly being sap tap, sabotaged by my ruler but it's 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 getting better all the time one part it used to really play out in my business was never wanting to stop working even on going on holidays with my husband we actually it actually caused so much grief because he is he he would never do something like 
the money archetypes quiz. He would just never do that. I think he's he's probably 50% maverick, 50% romantic, and that's it. I don't think he's got anything else there. <laughs> probably got a good bit of nurture there. He's, he's really great like that. But uh, he cannot understand anybody wanting to ever work outside of their work hours he just doesn't get it and we actually went it was a holiday we went, we went for a long weekend to Portugal and we got we we couldn't check in early we had a really early flight we couldn't check in uh so we had to go down to we went down to the beach to uh just to relax for a couple of hours before we could check in and we put out our towels he threw out his novel and I threw a book down on the towel and he just looked at me he goes you've bought a workbook again. And I said, it's not a workbook. He said, that's a workbook. I said, it's not a workbook. I said, this is just really great for my mind. It helps me relax and everything. It was Brene Brown daring to lead. That was my idea of a novel at the time. And it was just, I lied down and I started reading it. I'm like, this is actually work. Yeah, and I, 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 and I got it then. And I went back to the hotel and I noticed that I hadn't noticed earlier that a like, big pile of novels and I got, and that's my thing now is just I go and get trash, really trashy novels when I go on holiday. So those kind of things play out all the time. In, and even at home, even like not having any boundaries between work and because I just want to be working. And it was just, I, and I often say it like, because my kids are all in their 20s now, that I was really lucky when my first first couple of kids were, were young, but there was no internet. Otherwise, I probably would have worked 24 hours a day. And I think it's really hard on mums now to, to have that, to have that definition. So definitely that's been my biggest thing. And the big, probably the biggest thing that, that the money archetypes has helped me with is really seeing where that the ruler is trying to rule my whole entire world rather than maybe just my business. Uh, and I let her, I let the ruler part of me just play as much as she wants to in business. And the other part that can really sabotage is all the ideas and wanting to monetize every single little thing. And one thing that's, that's really happened over the years is wanting to change programs, wanting different, I can change my podcast name four times. I just want to change things all the time and I want to make them better and more efficient, but I also like just have these ideas and I want to run to it. And now every time I want to change, I've got my programs now and they're not changing. And what I want, I do now, I just go and get, I go and get help. I go and get coaching on my brain when I want to change something instead instead of changing it so that is something and just seeing all the ideas and just just parking that just just saying like yeah I can sit with this idea I give myself a two-week rule now of like if in two weeks time I still want to really run with this I will but other and in two weeks it's got there's something else there and then something else so just knowing that this is really normal uh with for other for for rulers uh and that it doesn't have to sabotage us. It can we can play with it without it without it sabotaging us. Here's the problem with this with this call already is I'm like, I think I need to start a new Instagram account just for the archetypes. I was like, oh, I need a new home for that. And I've been so disciplined, you know, for a long time in like all roads lead to boot camp. And I think sometimes there, there is that part of me. I'm so excited about doing the money archetypes because there's so many possibilities you know and it's it's so fun but it's also part of that sabotage for me of going oh I'm not going to just do one I'll do eight or um like with my book series so I've just done the money mindset for natural health practitioners book um the writer's one is it as at the edit so of course I'm not writing one book I'm writing a series of books like the four dummies guides and then each one takes so much longer than I think because I'm like, oh, I'll just like copy and paste and change it. But of course I don't. So instead of being a 20,000 word book, they're like 70,000. They're a proper book size now. And then I realized recently, I was like, oh, I don't have to write a book for everyone straight away. I can start with a blog post. Oh, okay. And then whichever one becomes, you know, more exciting to people, then I'll write the book about it. So it's almost like we need a, we need a moment to realize we're allowed to have discernment. And, you know, and I, it's so hard to pull back exactly, Jess, because we, we take the action. So as soon as I came up with this idea of like, okay, now I've got the editor, now I've got the person, now I've got the co-writer, now I'm looking for, okay, who has 
for the dance teachers one who already has dance teachers maybe I can co-write books with them how can I do and then so what I realized is that we each we're an empire of empires so each one of our empires would be more than a full-time business for somebody else you know, if someone was a speaker, that's a full-time business for someone. If someone's a coach, that's a full-time business for someone. Um, and so now I'm like, well, I'm now a, I'm going to be a publishing house and I'm going to be this and I'm going to be this. And, I'm this. and it's, it can be a little bit exhausting. So that's how it's sometimes, um, it can burn me out a little bit and it can, I can forget about the discernment piece and go, hang on, wait. Actually, it would be really smart to start with the blog post. It might actually get me the same result than having to spend you know, a couple of months writing the book. The first one took like 18 months because it was over COVID. The second one took, you know, like it's probably going to take five months. I want to get it down to like a month process, you know, because I'm like, let's churn them out, guys. Um, the other thing that I realized too is that we haven't, you know, spoken about um, is the gender stuff, you know, of, you know, the devil wears Prada. How dare a woman be so such of a boss and so transactional with her employees um, that there's a whole movie made out of it when that's just commonplace behavior for men who are praised for that. Um, and there's two quotes from that that are so funny when she says, by all means, move at a glacial pace. You know how that thrills me. And I'm like that sometimes when I see, you know, I ask for something maybe from Mark, who is a ruler too, and I can see the wheels churning and, he, and I'm like, come on, get me the answer right now. And then when she says, bore someone else with the details of your incompetence it's like just I can't deal with the incompetence and it's so unsexy incompetence is so 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 unsexy um so I I realize we don't have much time left I would love to hear just and we can we can go on for a little bit longer if you want but I want to respect that time is um and I think we're starting with Sandra this time is that right yep um just the final thought like you know, what would you say to rulers who are thinking about joining SMA? If you've ever been really triggered by someone saying, you don't have any hobbies, why don't you have, you should have a hobby that will sort you out. And you know that if you have a hobby, you'll just want to monetize it. <laughs> and you don't, you can't figure out why everybody else isn't monetizing their hobbies. What's wrong with everybody? SMA is your home. It was just like such a breakthrough for me to realize that uh, that my brain is not broken because I don't want any hobbies. Yeah, I do things I enjoy, but like I love my business. I really, really love my business. And it, I think for me, SMA is just, just a giant permission slip to be who I am in my business and in, in wherever I am. It's such an eye opener. It, it really is such a breakthrough. Um, also the, the, all the materials, all the support materials about marketing and selling to different archetypes is amazing. Cause I was, I was attracting pretty much hundred percent alchemists in my, in my business, which is, which is great. Absolutely loved it. Um, but realizing why I, I wasn't attracting other types of, of people, which is, and I love having a real mixture of different archetypes in my business. Um, the other thing was as I, as I've grown my team over the last couple of years, it has been such a breakthrough understanding the archetypes of my of my team members and what I need in my team members. I mean, a lot of people say like make team members make sure they go off and do, you know, Myers Briggs or 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 you know, disc profiling something like no, get their money archetypes. That is what is for me is uh, is has been the main needle mover in growing my an effective team in my business and knowing who I want to work alongside. So they are the main things, but I'm just like, if you're, you know, if, if you want to feel really at home somewhere and really understand the way that your, your mind works in your business, SMA is just complete gold. So are you a ruler, a connector or a maverick? Hang on, maybe you're more of a romantic or a celebrity. Take the money personality quiz right now and find out which of the eight money archetypes you